we'll have great opportunity to discuss uh, the recast, so-called recast of, of first railway package. I was, just want to, to reply to some, uh, some remarks. First, of course, um, information about uh, 21 member states, about say, concrete, concrete reasons why the reasoned opinion has been sent is public information. So, so everybody who wants can get this information. Uh, then I must say that uh, this first railway package uh, had very good intention to remove barriers and to improve the conditions for, imp for better functioning of transport. And the same goal we will pursue with the recast of, of package. And the problem is not that package was bad, but the implementation is insufficient and, and still the barriers exist and the resistance to remove barriers is still very strong and, and uh, so uh, the, the old system with uh, state-owned monopolies with great privileges, with no interoperability, we must change this system. We must uh, uh, improve the imp in interoperability. And so this is the purpose of this, uh, uh, the development uh, of, uh, of this railway, uh, railway reform, so to say. And, um, and this uh, problem, is, problem is exactly that this is, has not been completed. And, of course, we must always balance all steps with a high uh, with a, with a quality control. And this is, again, where the railway package has, has ideas how to strengthen the role of regulatory agencies. But the problem is that the regulatory agencies still remain very much um, uh, mixed with the uh, interests of state-owned owned companies. And then there you cannot expect a high level of quality control. So these issues must be addressed, and this, uh, this will, be, will, be, uh, will be addressed uh, in, in this uh, railway, uh, railway uh, uh, recast of railway package and maybe some other strategic documents as well. And, of course, adequate financing is and remains a very big problem, and uh, we need uh, uh, to find... Uh, all innovative ways to, to finance the bottlenecks and the same uh, many, many honorable members mentioned uh, the need to, to, for investments and uh, we must combine all possible tools and find some new tools to, to really find resources to invest to railways including the um, uh, modern um, uh, traffic management system including the, uh, the booking system that we can buy tickets uh, uh, as we can uh, in, in air transport and also um, uh, to, to, the, to, to better connect uh, Eastern Europe to, uh, to Western Europe, which is also uh, a, a substantial problem. So, uh, million details, I can, uh, can of course be very long and list, uh, list all, all uh, elements which are in process in preparing of this recast of railway package, but I'm very happy to to, to come with concrete proposals uh, to you again when we come with concrete legislative documents. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That uh, brings us to an end of that item of our agenda and we move on to the next item. This is also an oral question to the European Commission. It's on anti-counterfeiting trade agreement. I welcome uh, Commissioner Carol de Gucht. But uh, first of all, we will hear from the authors of the oral question. Carl Schlitter, two minutes, please. Thank you very much. Every institution has to defend its own role. The Parliament represents the people and has to defend their interests. The Commissioner calls itself the custodian of the treaties. And here, therefore, it's the principle of human rights and transparency and the rights of the Parliament that you have to defend. If we don't have access to the documents, then no institution can fulfil its role and therefore meet the expectations of the citizens. During the hearings, several commissioners 
said that we would get documents in the same way that the council does and we'd like the commission to stick to that promise. European citizens are concerned for the freedom of expression because there are so more infringements of their uh, personal privacy, uh, questions of uh, internet data and what have you. The EU won't work if citizens aren't involved. So where's the transparency here? Okay, this is a sensitive area, but the EU has to say what the conditions are so that people can take part in all transparency and human rights and transparency have to be defended. Once we've set out where people's rights lie, then we can start uh, working on the next stage looking at combating crime. What we have now is unacceptable. Negotiations are going on behind closed door and we have to ask the Commission to tell us what's in the agreement so that we can pass it on to citizens. Citizens want to know that their electronic devices are not going to be searched at border checks and they want to know that they're not going to see criminal penalties decided above their over their heads. So we want a promise from you uh, today that we're going to be fully involved. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say I'll see you in court. Daniel Kaspari, Daniel Kaspari, please. Colleagues, Commissioner, counterfeiting, smuggling, infringement of IPR clearly present a major problem. First of all, for us as the EU as a whole, but also for many member states. It's a problem for companies, for workers, that more and more counterfeit products are entering the European market. We can see that counterfeit makes up 250 billion euros in our market. For example, if medicines are counterfeited, for example, contraceptives, then a woman might become pregnant. But in the worst case, if medicines are subject to counterfeit, that might be a question of life or death, and we cannot be uh, responsible for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to fight against the infringement of IPR, against smuggling and against counterfeiting. We cannot have a situation where at the end of 2008, 180,000 million articles were stopped at our borders. More than 50% of them are dangerous and more than 50% of them came from China. So we have to do something. It's a major problem. Lisbon Treaty came into force in December last year. Act has been negotiated for three years now. But in the European Parliament, we have not been involved as much as we need to be in the future. And that's why I would like us to bring about more transparency in the coming weeks and months. We must have access to data that tell us exactly what's going on in the negotiations and what the position adopted by the Commission is. Negotiations have to proceed. We need to have a proper, sensible agreement which take on board all the criticisms that have been made 